Another uh, of the inquiries we had in our social media as Virgin Psychoanalytic uh, was what would we recommend as to read uh, in order to start getting into psychoanalysis? Uh, and I suppose that we might, I'm here with Alexander Dibutyevich and Jakob Lusensky, and I think we might have certain things in common to say, but I'm, I'm really interested in seeing, seeing those things that we don't have in common. Um, in my particular experience, uh, I arrived to psychoanalysis indirectly when I was really young, around 15 years old. I read um, an author that you might know, Jacob, called John Stein Gardner, I think. Uh, he's um, an author that wrote, a, well, wrote many things, but he's a philosopher and wrote a compendium of philosophy for young people called Sophie's World. I think there is a film about it. Um, and three quarters into the book, I learn about Sigmund Freud. I mean, I've heard about him, uh, but I learned about the fact that he uh, separated the mind into ego, superego, and id, and that sexuality was really important, and that symptomatology wasn't exactly what we thought it was, but actually had a meaning that we didn't know and it's because we don't know it that the, the symptom occurs. And from then on, I was fascinated with the idea. Um, I didn't see it much in school. I went to school in Chile, where the, uh, even though it was a private, expensive school, the system is really, really bad. <laughs> uh, but, but that was enough for me to push me to do psychology. And then the first day of university, when I started my undergrad in psychology, I went to the library, which is an enormous library, and I took the ego and the id, uh, first day. And I was reading it back to, uh, back home on the, on, the, on the metro. And I was surprised by the fact that I thought that Freud, at least in Spanish, at least the translation in Spanish, he writes so clearly about things that, are a bit complicated, but I never had any problem by reading Freud. Uh, I never read a page that I didn't understand. Uh, of course, I couldn't extract maybe all the, the, the juice and all the knowledge out of the lines as many, many of the people who write about Freud have done, but I never felt lost. So if I had to recommend anything, it would be Freud. I know that there is many like introduction uh, to psychoanalysis by a thousand different introductions to psychoanalysis or uh, psychoanalysis for dummies or etc. No? I recommend just to go to Freud and after I've been reading it and, and some of the things that he wrote more than once, I think the interpretation of dreams is a very good book to read. It's quite fun as well. And there is a more lay language uh, version of it, short as well which is called About Dreams. That's also a very good introduction if you don't know yet psychology, et cetera. If, if you're a psychologist or have been studying this topic, even if it's not psychoanalysis, but the mind, I would go for the interpretation of the dreams. Um, it's got not only uh, psychoanalysis in it, which is the second part of it, but just a very, very important and interesting um, <coughs> scholarly work of Freud trying to tell us what dreams are and what we think they've been for the history of humanity and what has been the approach we've been having to them, et cetera, et cetera, until he comes with this theory. And it's, it's not the last theory he's got. It's not the final version of Freud's theory, but it is a good start point, in my opinion. I don't know what do you guys, what do you think? I can't remember what the first book about psychoanalysis uh, I read. I saw a movie on television in which people were analyzing dreams and I figured out there is something inside a person, inside me, that I completely am not aware of, that influences my life so strongly, but I have no idea what it is and how it does it and so on. And I think the same evening I, I knew that's the science I'm going to study, that's the, the job I'm going to do one day. That's how curious it got me. I think that was like the eighth grade, 14, 15 years of age. And I remember in the coming years, one of the books I read 
and I think can be very useful for many people, is Jung's last book, and I believe the only popular book he wrote, Men in His Symbols. Illustrated and with many examples and so on, I found it very interesting and useful at that time. And then I think what made stronger impressions on me and that I would recommend to everyone who is about to start is to read as much literature and listen to as much music and go to museums and such stuff. I prefer reading Shakespeare or Dostoevsky or Kafka to reading psychoanalysts, I think, they inspire me in more profound ways. Uh, I think Rembrandt might be the best psychologist of all time and so on. And when it comes to reading psychology, once I think it's boiling inside of you from all the questions you have absorbed from novels and, and plays and Kafka diaries or whatever, I agree, I agree. Freud's literary style is wonderful. If you read introductory lectures, both books, they're really meant to be for someone who is just approaching the field, and they're really written in, 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 in a very elegant and eloquent way. There are in the world of psychoanalysis authors who are extremely complicated, like, for instance, Winnicott. It is never easy to read his paper and know what he actually means to say. There are parts of poetry in there. There are references to different things. Politically, it was difficult for him to, to write and be sure he would be published. But sometimes that's an excellent training, to read things that are too difficult for you at that moment and then return to them again and again and see how, how you're improving. I often recommend to students two more contemporary books, uh, both by the same author. One is The Shortest History of Psychoanalysis. The title of it is Freud and Beyond by Stephen Mitchell and Margaret Black. That is, I think, the best history of psychoanalysis if you have to put psychoanalysis, the history of psychoanalysis in under 300 pages. Each chapter, is followed by a case presentation, and then the authors write how they think the, the, the author they had just presented would work with this patient. And the second book is the, the, the posthumous book by Stephen Mitchell, Can Love Last, which is the clearest exposition of psychoanalysis and attachment theory in clinical work that I've ever read with very fresh and inspiring clinical material. So I think if you're beginning, that could be these could be good sources. But I, I, I always have to confess that I am a dinosaur, and I think without the classics, uh, you cannot understand the contemporary world or anything. And the best source of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and so on are patients. I would be always willing to join a group of people who are reading cases, who are reading sessions and discussing them in, in minute details. In that case, as much time as is possible to spend with small children and with difficult patients teaches you incomparably more than any book can. Well, two times when you spoke, Alexander, I was reminded of the American psychologist James Hillman, who passed away a few years ago, it's actually 10 years ago now, but who's been viewed as a post-union or he, he established his own school of thought called archetypal psychology. But he said about learning from, you said from, from children and learning from the arts, he was very much with you on that. He, he always, uh, he was frustrated with it. He imagined an institute where one would sort of start with the literature and read 
you know, the classics and that that should be almost integrated into the training and discussions around that from uh, with, with the psychoanalytic lens. But he also, at the end of his life, lived, life lived on a farm and he had chickens there and hens. And he said he learned an amazing amount of uh, psychology by studying them. So I don't know what that says about um, Hillman as well. Mm, but me then being a Jungian, you know, I found to, to Jung through a, a, through a personal crisis. Some people do find to psychoanalysis through that and then sort of cover, convert throughout uh, the treatment to also slowly um, move from the patient role to, to the psychoanalyst role, a very long journey in my case, at least. So I, I was in a crisis and I, I grabbed for things or I gravitated to things or I looked for things that could uh, save my sanity. And that was, you know, you know, reading in at that time, uh, readers like uh, reading Nietzsche, reading Kierkegaard, uh, trying out uh, meditation and whatnot. And uh, in that uh, um, that time, sort of in an esoteric bookshop somewhere in Stockholm, sort of finding some uh, Jung and starting to to read the man himself and. And, and being very touched by his words and, and somehow uh, uh, calmed and uh, being made understand that what I actually was uh, facing was not something necessarily only uh, pathological or uh, sick, but actually something that um, had that these symptoms that I was suffering from also had, I could start to understand them or there was something to, they, they were saying something about my life and what needed to be addressed. Uh, so so that, that's how it started for me. And I think the book that made a big, deep, deep impact uh, on me there was a book that many unions probably being asked this question, where would you start read is the book uh, called Memories, Dreams, Reflex Reflections, Memories, Dreams, Reflections, which was often labeled as Jung's autobiography, but it was not. It was written by his uh, secretary, Angela Jaffe, a brilliant woman in herself. And it's basically her conversations with Jung at the end of his life or the last years of his life. Some parts of the biography he's written himself, the parts from his childhood years, for example. And, uh, but then, you know, the criticism, you know, from some uh, areas is then that it's a little bit also an heroic portrait of the man himself. And God believe me, there's a lot of heroism, you know, and heroic projection in the union world on this very complex man, C.G. Jung. And he was not a saint. He might have been a genius, but he was not a saint. So, um, so that book is, uh, uh, that biography is remarkable. And some people, uh, I was very moved by it. Many people are. And it sort of opens up uh, yeah, avenues also for other reading, because he also speaks about his own uh, sources, you know, of Goethe and Nietzsche and such, and the deep influence that these uh, people had on his life. And also, of course, about his learnings from and relationship to Freud and such. Um, but Memories, Dreams, Reflection is, as I also said, it, it's, it's a bit of a complex book in that way, because it has, uh, yeah, one, one sort of leave it with, with a lot of projection on this man, Jung himself. So today, although I recommend that book, but today, if one actually thinking of training to become a Jungian analyst, not wanting to go into Jungian analysis, but I want to become a Jungian analyst, I would start with a much more contemporary book, which is not, you know, famous in any way. And it's called Jungian Psychotherapy, an introduction. And it's called by, uh, it's written by David Sedgwick, David Sedgwick. We can put all this in the notes later, you know, all these links to these books. And he's a contemporary, he's working now, he's in the US, and he's written a beautiful and profound book about, yeah, what actually happens in the room. And he uses a language that very much speaks to me. And he uses a, a very beautiful blend, I would say, of a psychoanalysis and psychoanalytic thinking and theory and union thinking and theory. Uh, and for me, you know, uh, working as a clinician, it's not, Jung is not enough for me personally. I had to read, you know, I had to go into to the psychoanalytic stuff much more than my education promised me. But this writer and this book, I find a very grounded and a sort of good introduction to how actually what happens in the room. And it's so hard to talk about that, but that's, that's that I would say, it's a sort of a good uh, compensation or a complementary to, to maybe then reading memories, uh, dreams, and reflections. 
That is indeed, uh, it's indeed such a nice book. Like now that you mention it, I remember I read it like 20 years ago and it was uh, super, super interesting. Uh, even if I'm not union, uh, it's, it's fantastic. Great book. Now, as we're talking, other, other things come to my mind. There's, I think, a completely a genre of its own of psychotherapy fiction. I was and, <laughs> and I have I have a couple of favorites there. I mean, probably probably the best one, and and at the time the most controversial one, is Philip Roth's Portnoy's Complaint, which is one of the most famous American novels of the last fifty or sixty years, and which is completely around psychoanalysis, his personal experience of being analyzed, and so on. I wouldn't like to. To spoil too much, and then there is even even an older book than that, uh, Lindner's Fifty Minute Hour, a collection of five stories, of uh, by one American psychoanalyst about five patients he treated, which is possibly the first book of the genre, but very well written, very interesting, and very lively, and and interesting cases, and then there's finally. A more contemporary thing, Schopenhauer's Porcupines by Deborah Lupnitz, uh, which is again a collection of five stories, but in this case, an adult and a child and a couple, all of them uh, rather different, and again very uh, elegantly and and written with with a lot of uh, sense of humor. So among many things in this genre, these are these are my favorites. Maybe someone might find them interesting as well. Have you heard of uh, Irvin Yalom's uh, The Day That Nietzsche Wept? That is like historical fiction on psychoanalysis. I found it super entertaining. Uh, okay. It's not very uh, it's not very scientific in any way, but it's incredibly entertaining. And Yalom has got a lot of fiction, uh, like psychotherapy fiction, not necessarily analysis, but... Well, on that, I mean, there's also in the Jungian field, many people opened their eyes to Jung through that movie that was made by David Cronenberg called A Dangerous Method, maybe released now 25 years ago or something. But I've heard, you know, both from patients and, and people I trained with that that movie somehow opened up something in, in them. Of course, when it was released, you know, in the Jungian world, it was a very, a lot of critique on that because it in no way portrays maybe the true story of what happened between, for example, Jung and Sabine Spielrein, but, but it's entertaining and it, it also also have, a, yeah, it, it can be an introduction. Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, this is, um, we'll try to provide a list under this yeah. video. Uh, in the different platforms for you, uh, the people who are watching, to find these books and and, and see if, if you are interested in them. Hmm. There is another one that I just remember, which is around psychoanalysis. I mean, it's a lot about psychoanalysis, but not about therapy, which is called In the Freud Archives. Um, who is the author, Alexander? Um, Jens Malcolm. Yes. Another That's the way to pronounce it. Incredibly entertaining book for people interested in psychoanalysis. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I should also then say and something more about Jung, just that, of course, Jung's Red Book, many people found Jung through the Red Book that was released also now 10, 15 years ago. Uh, he didn't want it to be released. There was a long yeah, half a century of discussion about if to release it and how. But it's a beautiful release, and it's edited by uh, Sonu Shamdasani, which is the, the greatest scholar of, uh, and the most important, I would say, Jungian, without being a Jungian analyst. He's an historian. Mm. But through the Philemon Foundation, they are, yeah, they released the Red Book, then later the Black Books. And the introduction in the Red Book, you don't need to read the whole Red Book. It's not for everyone. For some, it's the Bible, you know, but it's not for everyone. But one has to, yeah, for me, I had just a tremendous respect of the work he put into that book. But but, but the introduction that Shandra Sami writes there, he writes about Jung, he writes about Freud, he writes about the split in psychoanalysis, all of it. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, and, and rich introduction to, to, to the Jungian world, but also to some of the conflicts in the early days of psychoanalysis. And yeah, the edition by Sonu is 
the book, even if you don't like psychoanalysis, the book in itself is such an object of uh, collection and art. It's fantastic. So thank you very much for watching this whole video. Uh, these are, of course, our personal preferences, uh, and you might have different ones. I mean, I, uh, we hope you do. Uh, so apart from the list that we are going to leave you under this video, you are super welcome, and we actually urge you to comment with what are the books that got you into psychoanalysis, how did you start uh, reading psychoanalysis if you have, or if you haven't yet uh, with theoretical books, if there is any psychotherapy or psychoanalysis fiction that you would like to recommend us as well, and to all the people who are watching the Psychoanalytic now. Thank you very much, Alexander and Jacob. Thank you.